For USCFSales.com, this is Steve Lopez with a Fritz tip for you today. We've been looking at chess base features in previous videos, and I've decided to make a slight detour over to Fritz because I've been getting a bunch of Fritz questions in phone calls and emails lately. One of them that I received not long ago deals with a situation like you see over here in the notation pane. What we're looking at is an annotated game, of course, from Mega Database. And what we have here is the proverbial wall of text. What we've got is a bunch of variations here that sort of all run together. It's very difficult to distinguish where one variation ends and another one begins, at least not at a glance. You have to kind of look at it and see where Black's ninth move begins each time. And people look for ways to better distinguish between these different variations. And one of the things you can do, and it's a little known feature of Fritz that, uh, as I said, a lot of people just don't know about this, is you can right click on a variation to bring a menu up, just click with the right mouse button, come down here to variation color, select that, and what you've got is a palette of the different basic colors that you can use in Windows, plus you can create custom colors by dragging this around if you feel like it. Um, there we go. A couple different sliders will bring you to different places where you can get different colors. Usually basic colors will do the trick. If I want to take this variation that begins with Knight E8 for black and make it a different color, I can easily do that just by using one of the basic colors. We'll make it green. Click OK. And now this is green. It stands out a little bit better from the main line and other variations. Another variation begins with E6. We can right click, go to variation color, make this one orange. And now we can kind of tell them apart much better than we could before. In fact, we can make this a little bit darker if we want. There we go. Stands out a little bit better from the background. Notice that when you have a nested variation inside of another variation, that also changes to the same color. But you can click on the first move of this variation, go to variation color, and pick something else. We'll make it sort of an olive drab. And notice now that it stands out from the orange a little bit. A little bit too close to this green. We'll come back down here to variation color. Let's make it red instead. And that's a way to help distinguish different variations. That way when you run into the wall of text effect that you sometimes get in heavily annotated games, you can go through and make the variations different colors and help differentiate between them when you're just glancing at a game. Note too that this will not become permanent unless you come up here and use either save or replace. As soon as you close this game and go to a different game, and we'll try that, we'll demonstrate it. We'll come here, we'll go to our game list and we'll just pick a different game. Then we'll go to our game list and come back. Notice that it's all in black again. So it does not become a permanent part of the game unless you do a save game or replace game. So you can color to your heart's content. You can color like a kid who's got a brand new box of Crayolas if you feel like it because it's not going to permanently affect the game unless you want it to, unless you designate it to be a permanent part of the game by using save or replace. Very simple little tip that can help you navigate through heavily annotated games a little bit more easily than just leaving everything in black and getting that wall of text effect. Till next time, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.